now let us solve this problem graphically. Now, you will not get confused between why do we use, now you will see that we never talk about marginal utility, we always talk about marginal rate of substitution, because marginal rate of substitution preserves the, it does not depend on the, it does not vary with monotonic transformation of utility and that is, that is important to us, okay, fine. So, graphically what we have is, of course, here we have good 1, here we have good 2. Now, this is like this and budget line is like this. Okay. Of course, here I am assuming slope is 1, here I am taking slope is minus half. So, budget line is steeper than an individual indifference curve. Okay, because the slope of indifference curve is minus half at all the points and slope of this budget line is minus 1. So, this is steeper. So, of course, and what is the in this direction, if you look at in this direction, utility is increasing. Okay. So, what is the idea here? That the person would try to reach to the highest possible indifference level given the budget constraint. So, the budget constraint all these bundles are feasible. So, which bundle this person would choose? The bundle that is right here. So, this person will consume only good 2, only good 2. Now, let me change this problem little bit, okay? just to understand how it works. Again, we are talking about maximizing x 1 plus 2 x 2, of course, maximize with respect to x 1 and x 2, such that earlier our problem had x plus y is equal to i. Now, let us say what we have is with respect to x 1 and x 2, but now we are going to change the budget constraint. What we have earlier is x plus y. So, in the market x plus y is equal to i. In the market, one unit of good 1 can be exchanged for one unit of good 2. Okay. Now, let us change it to, let us make good 2 more expensive. Okay. What we will have is that now good 2 costs at least thrice as much as good 1. So, what we will have here is the budget constraint is x 1 plus 3 x 2 is equal to i. So, earlier what was happening? The market exchange rate by 1 is to 1, but this person valued 1 unit of good 2 more than 1 unit of good 1. Remember here, 1 unit of good 2 will give him 2 units of utility, while 1 unit of good 1 will give him only 1 unit of utility. So, he valued 1 unit of good 2 more than 1 unit of good 1, while the market valuation was same for both the good, both the good would cost 1 rupee each. So, that is why what he will do, since he values in the absolute term he values 1 unit of good 2 more than 1 unit of good 1. So, he will keep on consuming only good 2. Now, what is happening here? Forget about this budget constraint. What is happening here is that the value of 1 unit of good 2 is twice as much as 1 unit of value of good 1 in terms of utility of course. The value here we are calculating in terms of utility. Okay. So, it is twice as much, but what is if you look at the market, the market valuation of good 2 is thrice as much. When I say market valuation, I mean market price. So, the value you get from 1 unit of good 2 is twice as much as 1 unit of good 1, but market valuation is thrice as much. So, of course, in this individual's opinion, good 2 is expensive than good 1. So, of course, he will consume only good 1 and let us look at the this graph. 
what is happening here in this case is the indifference curves would remain the same, it would not change, but the budget line will change and how will the budget line change? In the new budget line, the maximum amount of x 1 that a person can consume was this much given by red dot. This would remain same, but what would happen? x 2 will come down, okay. it will come down and this is the way it will come down. Okay. So, now let us see if I draw more indifference curve, of course, the slope of indifference curve is minus half, while the slope of the budget line is minus 1 by 3. So, of course, now indifference curve here is steeper. So, now the optimal bundle lies here, this person will consume only x 1, none of x 2. So, what it means again this gives us a very good idea to look at this problem in a little different way. That 1 rupee let us think about 1 rupee that he is consuming, okay. if 1 rupee is spent on good one will get him certain, certain utility, certain amount of utility and 1 rupee if he spends on good 2 will also give him some different amount of utility and of course, he would compare these two. So, how much let us come, let us say the utility increase in utility if he consumes 1 rupee on good 1 is going to be 1, no, because if he spends 1 rupee on good 1, how many units of good 1 he can buy? 1, fine and how much will be the increase in utility? 1, if we take this problem and if he spends 1 rupee on good 2, how much he can buy of good 2? 1 by 3 and how much is going to be the increase in utility? 2 by 3. So, what it says that whenever given this scenario, whenever you spend 1 rupees, whenever you spend 1 rupee on good 1, you get utility 1 and let us say you cannot say it depends on the utility, it does depend on utility this particular value, but if you take monotonic transformation of these two values, this will always be more than this that is important. Okay. So, does not matter which representation of utility function, which particular representation you take, the it, it will be ranked in this particular fashion. So, here it is good idea to spend all the income on good one, fine. Let us look at the, the earlier problem, okay. the earlier problem was using this technique x 1 plus 2 x 2 and what we had was x 1 plus x 2 is equal to i. Fine. Now, let us see that if he spends 1 rupee on good 1, how many units of good 1 he can buy? 1 and how much will be increase in the utility? 1 and if he spends 1 rupee on good 2, how many more units of good 2 he can buy? 1 and what will be increase in utility? 2. So, of course, 2 is more than 1. So, rather than talking using numerical value, let us say if we have a problem where what we do is maximize u of x 1, x 2 with respect to x 1 comma x 2 such that what we have is p x x plus p y y and this is equal to i. Okay. I used this technique yesterday also, but there we talked about a scenario where we get interior solution where x 1 and x 2 both are greater than 0. Now, we are talking about a scenario where we have at least one of these goods, it, the optimal amount of consumption of one of these goods is equal to 0 and of course, this scenario is known as corner solution. Okay. Why we say, say it corner solution? If you look at the diagram, it would be clear either you get solution in one corner or in the other. Fine. Okay. So, what is happening here? Now, let us say if you have 1 rupee and if you spend it on good 1, how much will you get? 1 by p x and from 1 by p x rate of change, rate of increase in utility with respect to good 1 is? Of course, I have made a mistake, here I have been writing here, let me change the notation p 1, this is p 2, 
and this is x 2 okay. and this is 1 by p 1. Increase in utility is going to be u 1 by p 1. What is u 1? u 1 is this is basically d u by d x 1. It is a rate of increase okay. and what we have if we spend it on good 2, 1 by p 2, u 2 by p 2 and it is going to be or u 2 by p 2, this is 1. Fine. So, what happens when we have a solution where at the optimal solution where one good is not consumed at all, it means that the gain from spending even 1 rupee on that good, let us say if that good is good 1, then this has to be less than u 2 by p 2, then only well you get a corner solution. In other word, this will lead to x 1 is equal to, if this is true always, then x 1 star is going to be equal to 0. And inversely, if this is less than u 1 p 1, it will give us x 2 star is equal to 0. So, if we, we can tie it to what we discussed earlier, what we discussed earlier that in the optimal case when x 1 star and x 2 star, if both are not equal to 0, then what we need to have u 1 by p 1 should be equal to u 2 by p 2. In this case, x 1 star, x 2 star, they both will not be equal to 0 and it makes sense. If you are consuming both the goods, then the gain, this is gain from spending 1 rupee on good 1 and 1 rupee on good 2, they both should be equal. Otherwise, you would not spend the last rupee on one of the goods, which has lower you know return from the market. Is it clear? So, we have developed another technique and these all are related. Now, we have been using this particular utility function x 1 plus 2 x 2, this is the utility function I, we are using or let me write a more general one, this is a special example of a x 1 plus b x 2. Okay. This utility function of course, this utility function is representing a particular kind of preference. So, we are talking about preference not just the utility function. If we see preference of a someone represented by this utility function, what can we say about this person? We do not know that name. One good for another, but then he can substitute one good for another. So, what it means is that he is always willing to exchange one good for the other good in fixed proportion, the proportion does not change and this particular kind of preference is called, of course, this is linear in x 1 and x 2. This particular function is exhibiting something called perfect substitution. Okay. Now, let us, what does it mean in words that basically consumer is willing to exchange one good for the other good in the fixed proportion okay. and it when we get this, when we have two different kind of goods available in the market which serve the same purpose like Pepsi and Coke or tea and coffee or tea and cola, things like that. But the one catch is there, if you should be able to exchange one for another in the sick fixed proportion all the time not necessarily one is to one, okay, but in the fixed proportion. If this is true, then we say that this preference exhibits perfect substitution. 